All right, guys, I wanted to give you an update on what's going on with the whole SJM case. When we last left it, it was about Thanksgiving. And during that time, November 23rd, is when the two sides had presented to a judge their positions on whether or not to release the additional CCTV footage, the CCTV footage that we've all been asking for, that would bring clearer clarity to this whole situation. Don't know why it's such a big deal if there was nothing to hide. And of course, we all probably know the answer to that situation. The way, of course, the courts work is that you have to wait three months in between each time. It's horrible because each time you have to wait for a person going through a lawsuit, it's as if the next court date is another 24 hour period. So literally like when you're going through a court case, months can pass by and you're just like frozen in time and one, one month can feel like half a day. And so you're frozen in time. And so we are waiting until February 10th for the results of whether or not the CCTV could be released. And so we got an update on that situation at the beginning of this year. SJM's father was thanking everybody for his, the continued support and he had just expressed his kind of sadness of how this has been dragging on for so long. In the grand scheme of things, this is not even long at all, especially if he just started going to court. I mean, I feel for him because going through the whole court thing myself is that it's crazy how fast time flies by and how you're kind of like mentally stuck back in the year that the whole thing happened because you're just waiting for this court thing to progress and because there are months that happen between each point where a decision can change the outcome, it almost feels like days don't turn until a decision happens that takes you to the next step. And so literally four court dates a year felt like there were only four days in one year. And so, like, I felt like months would pass by and it was just, like, a week. And people were just like, oh, my God, like, you know, like, so much time has passed by. And to me, it was just, like, in a blink of an eye. And so that is the horrible part, I think, about, like, the time wasted when you are in a lawsuit. Well, we are going to see what happens with this whole situation with the whole CCTV. But... SJM's father also brought up that there was this reporter that had followed the case and he had given a pretty good summary of what happened. And this reporter pointed out that, you know, when he was first covering it, he was kind of going along with all of the positions that he had been fed saying like, oh, when he went at night, it seemed feasible that perhaps SJM could have stumbled into the water and drowned. But when he went during the day again, when the reporter went back during the day, because the reporter actually went to the site to visit, as a, and this is what SJM's father was saying, like, as opposed to other reporters that didn't even visit at all, he saw like, wait a minute, this thing is so shallow. Like, literally, you'd have to, like, walk out into the middle. Like, you'd have to, like, run a marathon to get even into a place where there is water enough where you could then have enough water to fall and drown. Like, the pictures that, like, the police drew were a little bit misrepresentative. Like, it was not any kind of situation where you could easily just da 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 walk in and you saw like my videos there like you couldn't 
You couldn't even get like one or two steps in before you like slipped and fell and probably never even had anywhere your face close to enough water where you would drown and let alone disappear into the water. You would literally probably be like splayed upon the rocks and never move before anything happened. So that whole thing is crazy. Then he also brought up again that the fishermen that they so relied on, they have the testimony. This is the smoking gun that actually is like smoking gun in plain sight, but they're just like, is it a gun? Is it smoking? Where the fishermen said that they saw a middle-aged man go into the water. Now, this is my question. Okay, so we're asking for like, oh my gosh, we want to see this CCTV. We want to see the CCTV. How about this? So where is the CCTV of SJM going into the water then? Why don't we flip it around and say, okay, police, if you haven't wrapped up the case, you could just wrap up the case real quick by just showing us the CCTV of SJM going into the water. Because... That would just end it, and if you have the CCTV, you can just, and if you're so concerned about like, oh my gosh, well, you know, we can't release the CCTV, well, you can just go through the CCTV and say like, well, the fishermen, because we believe the fishermen at this exact time saw SJM go into the water, then we can pinpoint through all the CCTVs the exact moment, the exact location of when SJM went into the water. Here you go. This is him going into the water. Case solved. How come you can't do that, huh? How come you can't give us the CCTV footage of SJM going into the water at around 4.40 a.m. like you led us to believe? Because it probably doesn't exist and probably something else was happening at that time. Probably with a middle-aged man there. Probably with the Burberry woman too. And probably right before then with Mr. A doing something something more than just supposedly sleeping on rocks. I mean, who can sleep on rocks like that? You gotta be real tired to be able to like be passed out on something that uncomfortable. I mean, like twigs and branches all, mm -mm, all up and who knows where. I don't think so. So that is majorly suspicious. Now, one post on his blog right before the new year, SJM's father threw then major, major suspicion again at Mr. A's phone. He in particular said like, look, there's a lot of places behind that Y tree where you can stuff a phone and hide it for a few hours until, let's say, a father and son go back in the morning and dig around there for about 30 minutes to try to find it again or somebody else could try to find it again. Because what they said was that the phone started to kind of ping, remember, like, after 7 a.m., Mr. A's phone. So, SJM's father surmised that after Mr. A called his parents at 3.37 a.m., which he reminded us again that they had totally hidden from us and we had to find out only through later sleuthing by luck that he called his parents, so between 3.37 a.m. to 7 a.m., that phone had to have been somewhere around that area, not been found and hidden. And theoretically, if you believe the sort of like fantasy of this phone magically going from the riverbank and then like 10 days later all the way near the parking lot area and picked up by a sanitation worker, even though during that time there were like hundreds of police people just like scouring the area. How did it magically just on its own travel there? Totally unlikely. And so he is basically 
making the assumption or accusation saying that like it was probably hidden like stuffed in there somewhere like in a crevice or a crack or even like that butt of the tree and then taken out somehow and then turned off taken off sight and then brought back you know plopped over because even the sanitation worker said like oh i don't think it was here i think it was just kind of dropped off here like conveniently that sanitation worker was like spilling the beans of the plan i mean i think they need really needed to shut him up because he was like exposing the plot when he was just starting to talk and he of course remember rejected the request for a lie detector test so did mr a rejected the request for a lie detector test something tells me we need to get some of that golden truth serum but something that one of you guys astutely astutely observed is that there may have been a third phone in play recall the video where Chungmin was filming Mr. A dancing and he was off at a distance and he was yelling at Mr. A saying, let go of those false hopes and then just come back. And he was kind of dangling the phone. And so you could kind of see like when he was like dropping the phone a little bit, you could see what was on the picnic mat on the ground. So his shoes, his shoes were off and then it looked like it caught this is what one of you guys said, another phone. He has a phone in his hand. Mr. A is looking at a phone. Why is there another phone on the ground then? That's a third phone. It looks white. You can see the gleaming white back and then you can see the portal for the camera and then also like the little flash. And it is not the space gray iPhone that supposedly Mr. A had. And it's not the Samsung S20 Plus that Chungmin had. So, whose phone is that? Is it a tablet PC? Because from what I know is that he may or may not have had uh, an iPad that's definitely not an iPad and it doesn't even look big enough to be a tablet PC it literally looks like another phone so where has that been in any of the investigations or the discussions was there another phone and who did it belong to and what role did that have in this and could that shed any light on what had happened that night so we still really are being so misled by this whole scenario and the observers are saying people are still just i think fed up because there's been an observation saying that because people only have like one child these days maybe even two if you do not solve these types of situations oh there is hell to pay in society they are not going to accept it nor should they even if they had 20 children what children are disposable they should not be able to get away with something like this and just think that society will just accept it because we have the technology the CCTV cameras were there, and at very minimum, if they really do think that SJM just walked into the river, they can bring us the footage of SJM just walking into the river. Once you destroy the fabric of trust like this, <laughs> like, why do you think that you're going to be, in terms of like, you know, the people in authority are going to be so comfortable getting away with this forever. You're going to have like a revolution on your hands. Like, why do you want to be like Marie Antoinette? Like, please, like you can't eat like cake forever. And like, do you want all that drama? It is better to just take care of the people and not have your head chopped off. Please, let's just get it together. What do you guys think? I mean, it would just be easier if they just released the CCTV footage. Otherwise, other people's heads will be rolling. Yeah. <laughs> well,
Well, like, share, subscribe, do what you need to. Thanks for joining us. See you again next time. Bye-bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.